Catacombs, okay. Sand place, all right. Kind of digging the vibe here. The music is really good. How was I supposed to know there were spikes there? I just got really fucking lucky. Sonic the Hedgehog would be jealous. Yeah, but like, don't get me wrong, I love this franchise to death, like, artistically, musically, like, for its art style and its quirkiness, but shit like that fucking pisses me off a lot. Like, it's like, there's no reason that they should have built it the way they built it, and they constructed it just to dick you around, it feels like. I almost died? Yeah, it's just, it's annoying. It's like, it's not challenging, it's not hard. It's just fucking irritating to deal with. It's not difficult. It just sucks. Like, there's no reason for it. If it had substance, I wouldn't really care, but it doesn't have substance. It's just empty difficulty. Like, because I'm coming out of an aerial jump when I'm expected to jump, they're gonna knock me away because I get hit by something and take, like, one fraction of a heart in damage? That's fucking stupid. Like, I'm sorry, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. It's kinda dumb. Nigga, how did I fall through that? What the hell? I hit it though. Like, I legit, I'm not even kidding you. Like, I hit it. I know I did. Okay, I didn't fall through- didn't fall through at that time. Those spikes don't insta-kill me? I didn't even know there was a platform there until it came into frame. Okay. Oh, I see though. Okay, I get it. I understand. Oh, it's just really fast. Okay, cool. I was able to cheat it. Nice. Okay. So, like, that's actually a genuine platforming challenge. Because, like, that actually seems like it has substance. It's like, okay. You gotta jump at the right intervals. You have to jump the right length. Like, you have to do the right shit. Like, that actually feels like it has substance. Instead of just mindless dickery where you have to do a segment literally 40 times because they decide to keep knocking you off platforms. It's just really stupid. Oh, shit. Okay, fair enough. Whoa. Those things make very unexpected noises. Wait, hold on. What? Yeah, I didn't mean to go down there. I wanted to go over here and explore over here first. I want to do it layer by layer. I don't want to, like, jump to anything else. There's also skulls in the background, which is kind of cool. Shallow spikes? Yeah, like, spikes are my most hated, like, worst enemy in this game by far. Okay, these guys hurt pretty bad. Okay, so they back up. They slide. Okay, th those enemies honestly don't really seem all that bad compared to the scorpion bitches. I think the scorpion bitches are a hell of a lot worse. Okay, luckily I had to come over here anyway. I didn't even know that, so that's good. Yeah, but like, don't get me wrong. Anytime I bitch at this series, it's- I like this series a lot. It just- it has certain issues that keep it from being as enjoyable as it could be. With certain design choices and certain decisions executively that are made with the way it works and the way certain progression works like certain segments and stuff like that it's a really charming game i really do love it but like don't get me wrong like in the future i'm not going to play a shantae title if i don't expect to be frustrated with it from time to time so i hope it's not a killer i hope like you don't mind it that much but it is kind of fucking irritating at times but i expected that so it's gonna happen from time to time. I don't like to bitch when I play video games, unless it has substance, and unless it's, like, critique that's necessary. Or I feel like is necessary. So, like, that part with the fucking stupid shooty guys and the fucking rats running across the platforms was just stupid. And that was the same thing I had said before. It's, like, literally the same exact thing I was saying before. Now I gotta figure out where to go. And I don't know. No, this is where the cricket dude was, that's right. Okay, so I have to go all the way back to the top, me thinks. Right? Okay, so my high jump can't reach that. Wait, do they expect me to go this way? Because I could climb the chain, I could do that. I don't know if I'm expected to go this way. But it's possible that I am. 
Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, I don't think I've been in this room yet. But I'm guessing that if I break all these blocks, something bad happens. Or maybe if I break all the blocks, it just doesn't stop their projectiles from feeding through, so I take a lot more projectile damage. Oh no, you know what? I bet I get something in this temple thing that, like, allows me to go downward through that. I bet that's what it is. Shantae and the pile of bullshit? No, it's just, like, certain sequences in these games are devised meticulously to be purposely frustrating and annoying. Like, almost every section with spikes in these games is fucking infuriating for, like, no reason. Like, see, that's my fault, because I mistimed the interval of the spike platform. Like, that's entirely my fault. It's not that I mistimed the interval, it's that I didn't shoot it. Like I thought I had. But, yeah, like, like I was saying when I first started this game, is that spikes are super evil, and they usually reserve them for late-game sequences. And they get really, really, really hyper bullshit toward the end. So it's like, if you don't have, like, an insane level of skill to, like, fly through certain very critical platforming sections, the late game sections of these games are incredibly daunting. No, no, no. Dark Souls games are adaptable. Dark Souls games are easier, I think. Because Dark Souls allows you room for error. And these games don't. That's what I'm talking about. It's the hypercriticality of the spike segments. So, like, normally spikes are an insta-kill in these games. There is very, very high and nigh near a thing in Dark Souls that will insta-kill you. Usually, Dark Souls allows you, like, a certain amount of, like, okay, I can fuck up on this boss and misdodge it a certain number of times before I run out of heals, right? This game is more like a, okay, one-dimensional, if you tap a spike, you die type shit. Or like, this is insta-death. Or like, you have to do this from the start of this very harsh platforming, you know, sequence or section or whatever. So like I said, these games are really not hard. Like, they're not hyper-challenging. They're not ridiculous. They're not ludicrous. They're not stupidly absurd. It's just like, certain sequences can be very frustrating and very annoying. For very poor reasons sometimes. And it depends on the way they're devised. And like, don't wor like, don't get me wrong, like, the spike shit usually is a matter of learning the navigation and the pathing and stuff like that. So once you know what's where and you know where and where not to go, it's not really too bad. It's just a simple matter of trial and error to find that shit out. But once you find that shit out, it's pretty consistent. It doesn't make it any less difficult or daunting, but it helps. And then there's other sequences where they literally just throw in some bullshit to dick you around, it feels like. And it's just like, why is this made the way it is? It's just kinda doofy. And it's kinda like, why? Like I was saying, like, with the insanely small platform. Like, you're, you're gonna put, you're gonna put, like... Like, for example, me missing that platform and falling and getting hit by that enemy is totally fine. But, like, imagine a sequence like that sand section I had to do to get here. Where they expect me to land on a platform this fucking small with an enemy that's literally only going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And if I get hit by this enemy whatsoever at all because I can't control where I'm gonna land for the jump and I can't even turn around in the same frame to be able to attack it, what do you expect me to do? Because when I land on the enemy, it just sends me flying backward into the sand and I fucking die automatically. That's bullshit. Like, that's just stupid. Now, if I could jump and spin and turn midair or whatever and slash a target, like, okay. I'm gonna jump this direction, like this way, but I'm gonna hold back on the control stick so I turn around. Like, you see how I can't turn around? I can only whip in that one direction. It's- it's kinda dumb. Like, it's like, it won't turn you around until- until the hair whipping animation finishes. So it's like, why are you going to give me a sequence where I have to skillfully jump, turn, and hit the enemy at the same time, in the same fucking frame, when you don't animatically allow me to do that? Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, I may be looking at game structure far too analytically, but ever since I played the first Shantae game I ever played, that's been one of my ongoing gripes. Is that not being able to turn while you do your hair whips is very fucking frustrating and very annoying at times for no reason, and it shouldn't be. And it's just badly designed. That's all it is. It's just badly designed. The game is great. 
It's just their shortcomings in its development that they don't think are going to be outlying issues, and then they turn out to make certain sequences a lot more annoying to deal with. Like, I'm not a game critic or anything. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not a fucking game critic by any means, but... Like, people always rip on me for when I say, like, when I'm playing Stellar Blade or when I'm playing a Dark Souls game, and I say that the inputs are not channeling, like, they're not going through, that's not me making shit up for fucking clout or fucking, you know, attention or whatever. Like, that's literally just inputs refusing to go through. And that shit's fucking frustrating. You've obtained Risky Scimitar. Okay. While in air, press L2 to break through blocks. Alright. So you can go downward. This is exactly what I was thinking it would be. I thought it'd be something like this. Okay. This makes sense. So, like, it's true that I've become a little bit more jaded in the way that I view video games and game design. But, like, I also feel like that critique makes it seem fair. Like, I have levy. Like, I have levity, you know what I mean? Yeah, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight, indeed. More like Shantae Knight. But, like, it makes me feel like I have some sort of levity if I can describe to people what I'm experiencing and what it feels like is happening. Because, like, it's one thing to sit there and be like Dark Side Phil and just say, Dude, the inputs aren't working. Like, this isn't going through. Like, this is fucking stupid or whatever because you just think he's bad. But I can analytically, constructively look at a sequence or look at something and tell you exactly what I'm having trouble with and why it's poorly devised. I feel like that's a bit different. And, you know, like, some people might rope it and couple it into being the same thing, but, like, whatever. I don't really care. You know. But. Like, habitually, I will bitch about things, but I'll try and do so constructively so that it makes sense to people. Instead of just simply going, oh, game bad, like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. I can suck sometimes, and, like, to be fair, whenever I do something and I fuck it up, I'll be like, alright, yeah, fair enough, I fucked up right there. Like, okay, now I know, now I know what to do here. Trial and error, like I said. Like, see, once I'm, like, once I learn what I'm doing with the sequence, it's not really that bad. This... Wait, hold on. Haha. Ah! -ha. Oh! Okay. I didn't expect it to bounce me like it did. That's not something I had expected. But, you know, like, after playing Var Cry 3, Voss says that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing the exact same way all the time and, and expecting different results to happen. I'm not like that. I will usually analytically look at the way I tackled something and then methodically roll over in my head all the potential outcomes and possibilities that I could tackle it with. And then when I try, like, six things, I'm like, why doesn't this work any way I tried to do it? It's like, nothing I do works. Why? And, you know, I try and constructively analyze and understand, you know, what the developers had in mind. Like, I try and think with that kind of mindset rather than deconstruct something and just dismiss it as garbage. And I think that's two entirely different things, right? Because, like, I think you're a delusional idiot if you're going to sit there and play a video game and struggle with something and just say the game is bad and not say why. But, like, I've played Bloodborne a million times. Bloodborne is an excellent game. Does it have issues? Fuck yes it does. I've played Dark Souls a million times. That game is world renowned. Does it have issues? Fuck yeah it does. Like every game has issues. No game is built perfect. And like I don't care how much a fan of something somebody is, that doesn't mean that it's perfect. Like every game has issues or ways that it could be improved or made better. You know, like it's just how it is. And people don't want to admit that because people fanboy over shit. And people get way too familiar and way too accustomed to shit. And then they think they know better and they condescend and they have a whole air of elitism about shit. And like, I think that's idiotic. I really do. I think that's entirely fucking idiotic. Like right there, I press R2 instead of pressing the sword button. That's my fault. Like, I know what I did wrong there. Like, you know.
But, you know, like, people are fucking stupid. At least people devolve. I believe people devolve over time and become stupider. And, like, at the end of the day, opinions are opinions, you know? But, like, I can tell you with my soul's experience when I should be getting fucked up by something and when I shouldn't. Like, whenever I'm fighting Dancer of the Boreal Valley and I know I do a fucking roll, and the game says, no, you didn't do a roll, you got cleaved in the face, I'm like, you're full of shit. Like, I know I rolled that. I know how that attack works. I know exactly where to roll to. I know exactly when to do it. Like, the game is just full of shit sometimes. It's inconsistent. It works on a basis of variable rather than consistency. And now I know what the counter argument is gonna be. If the game is so inconsistent, how do people do no hit runs and challenge runs and shit like that? It's because they've literally analytically deconstructed the entire game countless times over and literally done 8 billion practice runs to know how to specifically route something to manipulate an AI to work exactly the way they want. That's why. That and a whole lot of practice. Don't get me wrong. Like, those Souls Challenge runs are no fucking joke. Those people spent a lot of time learning how the game works. Like, they committed the time to be able to make that kind of shit possible. Don't think that they didn't. So, like, don't discount those kind of challenge runs as pure... Just, you know, like, don't dismiss it as in it doesn't take skill, because it definitely, most certainly, absolutely does indubitably take skill. It does take skill, for absolute sure. And I can look you in the eye right now and tell you I'm absolutely incapable of doing that. Even if I were to practice for a fucking million years, I don't think I would ever be able to do a no-hit challenge run in a Dark Souls game. Ever. I don't care if you gave me a weapon that killed everything in one fucking single hit. I don't think I'd be able to do it. So do I think it's impressive? abso fucking lootly Do I care about it? No. But I respect people who do it. But you like, you know, com conversely, like when I played Sekiro for the first time, for example, it was really funny. I still recall this. I'm never gonna forget this. I was playing Sekiro for the first time, and I was fighting the Shinobi Spear Hunter. And I did not have any upgrades, I did not have any heals, I did not have any beads, I did not have any gourds, I didn't have any shinobi tools. I literally had fucking nothing. I was just starting the game and it was like the second or third boss that I had fought, right? And I was fighting him, I wasn't using a walkthrough, I wasn't using a guide, I wasn't using anything, whatever. I nearly beat him on the very first encounter with him, right? And then, basically, what Sekiro has is it has an innate health value property where if you take an attack that exceeds a certain portion of your health gauge, your character will enter a animation where they, like, go back or whatever and they stagger a little bit, and it completely disables you being able to input anything at all. So what would happen is my overall health value was so low that the Shinobi Hunter would just strike me once, and if I got hit, instant death because he would just follow up right away with another attack that I could not deflect, nor I could dodge. And I couldn't do shit about it. And I got overly cocky, because I almost beat him the first time, right? Like, I got insanely overly cocky, and I was like, oh, this guy's gonna be fucking nothing. I went in there, and I got wiped in a basic one-hit kill, like, 40 fucking times. To the point where I got sick of it, I got pissed off, and I broke a controller. And I was like, this is fucking stupid, this game sucks ass. I'm like, this is mega dog shit. Like, this is garbage. Like, I don't want to play this anymore. And that clip went viral, and it's what got me a lot of attention on my channel, right? And I had people on Reddit shitting all over me, and people on YouTube comments saying, This guy can't beat a tutorial boss, lol. DSP mopped this guy. This guy makes DSP look godly. And I'm like, y'all are fucking dumb, because you're speaking out of context. You have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. You didn't see my first attempt with the Shinobi Hunter, where I nearly mopped the floor with him instantly on my first try. You didn't see that. You didn't see the fight where I took absolutely no hits. But, like, you're demanding, like, your expectation is that I'm gonna play perfectly on a first blind playthrough with no level ups, with no heals, with no boards, with no nothing? You're an idiot. Like, it's just idiotic. It's stupid. I didn't even have Makiri counter yet. I didn't even have that. I had no skills. I had no nothing. And Makiri counter is what they expect you to use to beat him because, guess what? He's a tutorial boss. He's a tutorial for a skill I did not have. How do you expect me to contend with that? It's like, you're just a fucking idiot. Squid Baron, you're here? You better believe I am. 
Why? What about the vacation? I'm hanging it up. Goodbye, dreams. See you never. But you can't just give up on your dreams. What about the frolicking beach bunnies? Oh, let me guess. He thinks I'm putting him through an elaborate ruse or whatever to fuck with him, huh? So now he's mad at me. And old sailors and unbuttoned third buttons. I thought all that meant something to you. Answer me this. How much map have you traveled? What do you mean? How full are your pockets? About half, right? Halfway full? Filler boss. It's my destiny. I see that now. I won't try to escape it. You're scaring me. You and me both. But I won't hide from fate. I'm going to be the best filler boss of all time. Old hat. Recycled moves. All of it. Bring it on, sister. Let's boogie down. Okay, I guess I'm fighting Squid Baron then. <laughs> Reoccurring rascal slash concerned parent. I love it. Oh, he jumps. Okay. This is the part where he jumps, right? Yeah. Oh shit, I couldn't move out of the way of that. Does he get faster? Yeah, he does get a little faster. Oh, come on, I couldn't jump there, dude. Dude. Couldn't get out of the way. Dude. He's so fucking quick now. Oh, I, I did the wrong thing. I should have had him. I sorted when I should have had him. I pizzaed when I should have french fried. It's my fault. Oh, he jumps over me every time. Okay, that makes sense now. Too early. Easy. Phase 2. Squid Baron 2.0. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, oh, now I gotta knock his shell off with the sword. Okay, good thing I was already using the sword. Dude, what? Like, right there I got knocked to the floor, and then my inputs would not respond right there. Like, I just couldn't do anything. Shit. Jesus, dude. Holy fuck. Bro, what the fuck is that shit, Chief? I gotta ask. I should use another pike ball when he does that. And get more damage output that way. Okay, 50 jumps. The, the jump is too fast to the point where I literally can't move out of the way of it, so what do you want from me? Like, what do you expect exactly? Like, that seems kind of idiotic. I'm not gonna hold you, the pattern isn't all that hard, but like, I can't get out of the way if you make him jump that fast. This should fuck him up, though. Yeah, I was gonna say, that should be a lot of goddamn damage. Take that, you stupid squid piece of shit. Easy, boss. Not bad. I feel like I adapted pretty well. I think the only thing there that fucked me was actually the frame invulnerability when you get hit. Because it knocks you to the floor, and by the time you recover, he's so fast to the point where he's already on top of you again. Sorry, but you forced me to fight. What, did I break something? You... Were... Amazing! Huh? That beatdown! It was just what I needed to reawakening my fighting spirit. I'm a great filler boss today, and I can be an even better one tomorrow. Imagine, I could paint myself blue and play the part of Ice Variant. I could shadow clone myself and swap between bodies. I could reappear at the end of an adventure in a boss rush. Maybe show up as a common thug later, you know, to make you feel really, really powerful. I'm bursting with potential. 
This is the only chapter one. What? This is only chapter one in my book of the encyclopedia. That is my life. I need to read slower. Hitting you helped. Purple haired warrior maiden, you are my one true inspiration. I must go. Take this. You got the Mud Bog Island map. Okay. You are my best beautiful tomboy woman. Fare thee well. See ya. I have a new appreciation for Squid Baron. Sky's probably back in Sequin Land by now. And I don't see Roddy anywhere. Guess I'll head back to the dock. Pirate Flare. That's what we have these for. Flare activated. Nice. Yeah, see, like, that's what I mean by, like, the witty writing. The witty writing is so funny. Like, where he's like, I could come back as an ice variant. Or I could do shadow clones and have, like, other moves and shit. It's like, I like that. If you're through wasting time, maybe we can finally get back to work. What happened to Sky and Roddy? Let's just say I showed them the door. Would you relax? They're fine. Now, did you find the Den of Evil? Yep. And you destroyed the evil residing there? More or less. Hmm, so you found my blade as well. Wish I'd had that earlier. I'd have spilled the innards of a certain incompetent chieftain. You make a lousy pirate. Let's have a look at that map. I've never seen that sprite of Shantae before. 